Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video we are going to make three different styles of ornaments using different kinds of paper. Um, we're mostly going to be using sheet music or vintage hymnal type things. But I also want to show you this one other idea. Um, I don't know why, but for some reason this Ansley collection sends us one of these gigantic beautiful catalogs of all the bazillion dollar houses in the Atlanta area. They send it to us every year. They must think we have a bazillion dollars, which we don't. Or, I don't know, we got put on a list or something. But this is such nice thick paper that I want to show you an ornament that's the same style as the first one we're going to do that I made with some of these pages. So, we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do this style first. And here is, and they'll have an ornament hook at the top, or you could do some pretty ribbon. This is the one that is made from those, um, that beautiful Ansley collection. So let me start with that first, okay? Stay with me to the end because my favorite, my all-time favorite that I've done like five times, this kind of an ornament, will be last. Okay, so I'm using a punch that I've had for a million years from Hobby Lobby. It's their store brand. It's a three-inch, like a scallop circle, all right? And basically what I did was I just tore a bunch of pages out of the book. And then I'm going to punch using this awesome punch. I don't know, uh, five, six, however many you want pieces of the scallops. So let me just punch three more. days of crafting with like my mom's better home and gardens type of uh, magazines. Okay, let's set this over here. So for this first style, um, depending on how thick your paper is, you really need to have between five and eight pieces. So I've punched this little shape. I'm folding it in half, each piece. And I am making mine on some wire, some craft wire. It looks like this. It came from Walmart, but you can get it everywhere. I do not know what the gauge is, sorry. <laughs> it could, you could use, I would imagine, any gauge that you would like. Okay, so I have six pieces here and I folded them. And what I'm gonna start out by doing is I'm just taking one of them and, oh my word, my glue gun is a little mess. If somebody could invent two things for me, I would be such a happy crafter. Number one, could you invent an awesome low temperature hot gluing device? that does not leave glue strings everywhere. And number two, could you invent a machine that after you use one of the stencils, you could just feed it through that and it would clean the stencil and dry it? Those are the two things that I would really love. So I'm just gonna put some glue on one side. I'll lift this up in just a second and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so see, I glued that piece together. Now I'm gonna put some glue here, and I'm gonna lay another piece on top. And it really doesn't take a lot of glue. You could use um, low temp also if you wanted, but I am such an impatient crafter. I can't stand for low temperature 
glue. For regular glue, like craft glue, I can't stand waiting for it to dry. Okay, so I've got all six pieces glued together. And it looks kind of like this. So I'm going to take a piece of this craft wire and then use absolutely whatever beads you want. They could be, um, you know, glass beads or wood beads. This was a really cute little, um, what do we call these things? Beaded garland that I got a few months ago at Dollar Tree for a dollar twenty-five, and the beads are real small and petite, and that's what I like. So. I am in process of cutting this one up and using the beads. Okay, so I put three little ones, natural, black, natural, on the bottom. And I will show you in a second, but I just bent this in a little loop-de-doo with this needle nose type plier. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I am going to Stick it right here. Let me get these all sort of. Just basically want it to be sandwiched. My wire. You see that? And then I'm going to glue either side closed. end up with so far. And I'll twist this one more time just to get these beads up closer to I can get a hold of it. I might have to do that after. Um, okay, so then I'm going to add a couple of beads on the top here. I'm going to just repeat the same pattern. A little, little um, natural and a uh, little black. I was initially trying to do this on a piece of my favorite polished hemp that I get at Walmart that looks like this, but I couldn't get the beads threaded on it because these ones have such a little teeny hole in them. So then I was like, okay, I'm just going to use some, some wire. Okay. And this is way too much, but so let me just cut some of it off. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of twirl this around. My needle nose pliers. And then what I will do is I will use an ornament hook. So isn't that cute? Super easy. I mean, you could use... You could probably use magazine pages. The only thing is that sometimes they're really thin. Um, okay, so let's do it with the um, sheet music. And I have a couple pieces punched already. Let me see if I have another piece of this same music handy. I went through my little stash. Let's talk about sheet music too. Um, okay, sheet music is awesome to craft with. It's sometimes hard to find. It does not have to be vintage. It doesn't. It can, this, this pack right here, I think this is the last page that I have of it. It was my friend's <laughs> high school son's trumpet music for high school band. And that works just fine. I'm gonna cut off this margin here because I, um, I don't want my punch to have that empty space in it. So, where did I put my punch? And you could use whatever punch you might have. Okay, so we're just going to do this real quick. And then um, we'll move on to the next one, which is a little more complicated. But it's the same idea. And then we'll do my favorite. 
these tassels made with champagne corks. Okay, and I don't know how many pieces I have here, but we're just gonna, we'll count it when we're done. So I'm fold, folding the whole pile in half. So let's do the same thing. We'll start out by gluing some of these together. Well, I didn't say any of my normal stuff, you guys. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get, um, I'm so excited to show you the craft that I forget to do any of the the basics but I do see there's a good amount of people on here there's right now there's like in the 90s numbers of eyeballs oh there's actually seven pieces here and these can be you can do as many as you want or down to maybe five four or five it's going to be a little thin at that point And when you're doing this in real life, you're going to be much more careful. I'm just trying to whip this out for you guys. And I don't want you to have to wait forever. Okay. So here's the start of my ornament. Also, I did want to mention... Oops, I've got a couple pages glued together. Oh, that's supposed to be glued together right there. Um, that you could use any kind of paper you want. You really really could, you could use um, scrapbook paper, plain craft paper, like I said, magazine pages. Um, yeah, there's a ton of options. Okay, so this is kind of what it's looking like. And we're gonna do the same thing. But you know what, let's put a little twist on it. Let's do, one of these um, little sparkly pipe cleaners, or now they call them chenille stems. Um, let me see if I can possibly get a bead on the end of it. I'm just gonna go for one. Yeah. Okay, so. We're going to use a little glitter for this one. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing as what I did before. A bunch of glue in there. I'm sticking my sparkly pipe cleaner inside. And then I'll put a little glue over the top of it and a glue okay so let's finish this off and then let's pull out a little bit of glitter and then we'll move on to this one and um, last I'm gonna do my favorite which I've done that, that style of um, champagne cork for the last five years, all different ways. Um, so th there are so many variations on what you could do. If I had wanted this to have gold, this is that Sulin glitter. It's called 24 Karat from Walmart, and I could use gold a gold cleaner, but I'm going to do silver, and I need one bead for right here at the top. These little teeny, teeny beads came from Dollar Tree, if you missed that part. And at the very end, if you would, I'm going to cut part of this off. At the very end, if you would like 
my supply list or the replay in case you missed part of it or you just want to watch it over again. Just let me know and I'll be glad to get that for you. Okay, so I'll use the ornament hook one way or the other to um, finish that off. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of Mod Podge and just a foam brush. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of tap it along the edge. And you could do this super heavy or pretty light like what I'm doing, depending on the look you like. apply it and see how it looks if it needs more okay and um, I don't like to waste any of this this glitter so I'm going to show you my method of collecting what is left over and putting it back in the container put my glasses back on tell me in the comments if you have started I don't, I don't use glitter a lot in the summer. I mean, I can't hardly even think of anything that I use it for in the summer. I use it mostly at Christmas time. Um, so tell me if you have started using glitter for any of your crafting projects yet. Or maybe you use it all year round. See how pretty that is? Just with a little dusting of glitter on the edges. So I could continue adding more, but I think that looks pretty fabulous. A little bit more right here. All right, and I'm gonna set it aside on its own little paper plate, and I'll be um, hunting glitter in my house for the next who knows how long. Um, okay, so I'll just take the paper plate that I sprinkled on, fold it in half, it turns it into like a funnel type thing, and just tap it, and it will go right back into my little container, and I didn't waste any of it. Okay, let's move on to the next style of ornament. And I want to tell you the full story about this. Okay, this, I googled um, uh, Victorian ornament shapes. And I pulled up a web, like well, there were lots. I pulled up several websites, but I ended up printing one. So I don't own the rights to this, I'm sorry. I can take a picture of it when I'm all finished, but I don't own it to share it with you, the shape, for a pattern. However, if you just Google Victorian ornament pattern or Victorian ornament shapes, you're going to get a bunch of different ones. And then I enlarged this because these were too small. Okay, so then... Oops, let me get this off my spot here, or else it'll be all over the project. Just that little blob of glue. Okay. So then, this is that same sheet music. Then all I did was fold a piece in half, and I actually, uh, I'm a frugal crafter and also I'm an impatient crafter. So I cut three sheets at a time. And I, so I just folded my pattern in half, put it on a piece of sheet music that I was going to use, and then I just cut it out three pieces at a time. I 
And depending on how thick your sheet music is, uh, it might be hard to cut three pieces. So you might have to cut two pieces at a time. get these little spots where it's got some nice little shape on, on it. Okay, and these do not have to be perfect. But look how great that looks. And I even got it with the words going the right direction. I'm doing these as this being the top and this being the bottom. So, I don't know how many pieces I have here. I feel like I was not as careful with this one, but you want to fold all the pieces in half and we're going to do basically the same thing as what we did with the other deal. And if you have sheet music, this craft is practically free. And you can make these to hang on all kinds of things. They can also go on packages. Okay, so I'm going to start doing the same thing as I did before. Just applying some glue here. And laying my next piece on top and getting those, you know, as close as possible. this very intricate Victorian shape ornament is going to be better with a thicker paper. And let's talk about paper for just a second. Let's jump off, off the point for a minute. There are tons of different styles of sheet music and hymnals. Um, several of these were sent to me. This one right here I absolutely love. But the thing with it is it's, it's very old paper and it's a little too crumbly to use for this project. Um, this one isn't too crumbly, but I wanted to just point out that there's all different shades as well. So I just am always on the lookout for sheet music. Every time I go to a thrift store, I always go to the book aisle and to the part of the book aisles that has um, like instructional things and uh, college books. And, and I'm always looking for dictionaries too, but today we're doing sheet music. And um, if it's, it doesn't matter whether it's trumpet, uh, xylophone, violin, doesn't matter if it's old. You want the paper to be strong and sturdy enough that you can craft with it. Um, but I'll, I picked up almost all of my music at thrift stores that way. And I've just paid a couple dollars a book. You can also ask around because, or look if you have a piano, look in your bench in the bench seat. I swear mine used to have some, some music that was my grandmother's because I inherited that pian our piano from my grandmother. But when I went to look for it a few years ago, there was nothing there. I probably just had decided that my kids didn't want to play the piano and I probably didn't know at the time that I would fall in love with it and want to craft with it. And so I probably just donated all of it or even tossed it in the garbage, I don't know. Okay, so I'm just continuing to layer piece over piece over piece. I'm doing one long band of glue down the spine. Glue sticks. Oops. 
Yeah, if someone could please invent a hot gluing device that was low temperature and that didn't leave all these nasty strings everywhere. Oh my gosh, you could make a zillion dollars. Do you realize that? <laughs> And for me, I use, I, I just, I love using stencils. They're the best, if you ask me. Um, and I use them so much that I do get very tired of cleaning my stencils. So I would love it if somebody could invent uh, like a little machine that just has a little conveyor belt that goes through it and it washes your stencils and dries them. And if it could put them back on the backing sheet, that would even be better. Okay. So here is my pile. And I'm not gonna even worry about the glue that's poking out right now. Except I do wanna glitter this. And I wanna glitter it in gold, so let me see what's going on here. Wow, there's a whole bunch of people on. Um, who has started making Christmas ornaments. I usually start pretty early every year because um, for our family tree, the one that's in our family room, I 90% um, of the ornaments on that tree at my house are things that I have made this year, the year before, the year before, whatever. And I always, I pretty much have narrowed my Christmas tree themes down to cream. <laughs> cream and natural is what I love, but I'm also doing a, a tree in our dining room this year that will have um, a coastal theme. So I'm going to take this and I am just going to feed it up the top because I don't need anything to be sticking out of the bottom. So right here on the spine, before I have glued this puppy all together, I'm just laying a bunch of glue. And this is why I'm using a low temperature hot gluing gun, hot gluing device, sorry. Facebook doesn't like that word. Um, because my fingers are constantly in it and I have had way too many hot glue burns that I'm not willing to risk it anymore. So see that's just kind of stuck in there. And now I'm going to open it up and these two ends, I will put a whole bunch of glue on them and then we'll smoosh them together and make a perfect little sandwich. hold that piece of pipe cleaner inside. I'm just going to fiddle around with it for a second. Stay with me because next up is going to be my favorite. And those are so easy and oh my goodness, I have been making those for five years. And just switching out the decoration on it basically. Those also are practically free. Okay. So I would fiddle around with this a little bit, but look at it. Not too shabby, I don't think. Okay, so I will just use an ornament hook, you know, one of those metal curly Q things to go through this. It's super lightweight. Um, let me get another paper plate and my handy dandy foam brush. And let's just see what it looks like with gold glitter. If you are um, glitter opposed, you don't have to use any glitter. 
Or, I mean, you could use the red glitter, that would be pretty. So I'm just running this. One edge of each piece. And if I was, um, you know, not live and trying to rush so that I'm not boring you guys to death, um, I would be definitely more careful and more deliberate about this, but I'm just trying to get it done, get it on here so we can glitter it and then we can move on to the, um, the uh, wine cork tassel ornaments. Okay. I have to fold this up and put my glitter back inside the little container before I'm even finished. This really does... Gold might not be my favorite. My first choice, I would probably choose the silver, but it is very pretty, you guys. Let's see where I completely missed one. even glittered a, a glue string. So I will come back and fix this up with another layer of glue um, just and then do the, um, the gold glitter again. Isn't that pretty? So if you want the pattern or a pattern for a Victorian looking ornament like that, just ask Mr. Google. Victorian ornament pattern. That, those were the words that I could think of to say in my Google search, and, and that worked. You can also look on Pinterest. Um, okay. All right, so now let's move on, and let me show you my favorite. And I have a, a whole closet full of these in all different styles. I've put all kinds of things on them, from bling to lace, to ribbon, um, lots of buttons. I'm just looking, do I have any more out right now? I don't, but I do have this cute, cute little thing, which we'll do this again. This was something I did five years ago. That's called an accordion tree. Isn't that pretty? And simple. Um, okay, so for this style, let's grab some sheet music. What you're, oh, I just knocked my little darn. I need to get some E6000 and a little dot of hot glue out. I will do that to fix that. Okay, so, um, I like I said before, I like to cut the margins off so that I don't have all this, these spots that have just nothing on them. So see, I just cut all that off. I'm going to do the same at the bottom. Makes your tassels look better, I think. I'm going to do the same at the top. And it does not have to be perfect, obviously. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay. 
some of the sheet music that I have purchased has like the teacher's little pencil marks and grades and it's pretty sweet. Okay, so your tassel length can be any length that you want. This is pretty long. Um, I think what I did in that instance was I just took some sheet music, cut the margins off, and then I folded it and cut it in half. I can't see where my half is. Now I have a pile. A little bit off of this part right here. All right, and then to save time, I don't know how many pieces are here, 10 or 12 maybe, then you're just gonna cut strips up your paper as thin or as wide as you want but stop before you get to the top and these don't have to be straight or neat or anything I have enough here to make several tassels tell me in the comments if you've made these before Another fun thing we did, I think it was two years ago, which was inspired by these tassels, is I collected fresh green pine needles that had fallen out of my trees. And um, I held them all together with the, that little top where they connect to the tree together. And um, put a rubber band around it and then used some uh, ribbon and I made pine needle tassels that were beautiful and they're still beautiful. They've dried. They're sort of green now. Here. I'll get those out before Christmas is here. Um, I love doing crafts with things that are natural that I can collect from my yard or my neighbor's yard or the park or a parking lot. Damn, almost there. My paper is wanting to twist. I can cut this off right here. See what we've got there? Now you can build this on a wine cork. You can build it on a wood, um, like what you get at Dollar Tree, those little wood stems. My favorite thing to build them on are champagne corks. We don't drink a lot of champagne. We do drink wine at our house, but we don't drink champagne. This is not all from my house. These were, uh, I purchased these in, um, Bend, Oregon, when I was out over the summer visiting my son at a thrift store. So be on the lookout there. Um, but my favorite thing to build these on are champagne corks. So I'm going to look at my music and see which side is the prettiest. And that is really personal preference. I like this side the best. So let's start right here. And I'm just going to put some glue. I'll hold this up in just a second and show you. And then all we're going to do is do a little glue and wrap it tight and then squeeze it so that it's smooshed into the glue. It's going to have a little bit of a, um, you know, a little crinkle. And try to keep 
it going straight as much as possible. So you could cut your paper watching TV or something. And then you could make a ton of these. And these would be super pretty. I put these on packages. They're pretty on a Christmas tree. They're pretty on a garland. They're, they're just, um, I think they're just wonderful. And they are practically free. Where's my glue? Let me get some more. Oh, here it is. Practically free is always something that I like. Okay, so let's do another. You can keep going as long as you want to. You can twirl it around your cork in whichever direction feels most comfortable to you. You just want, as you're going around, you want to squeeze it in. Can you see how it's got a little bit of like a crumpling? But that keeps it so that it's not winding down. So it's staying um, up. And when it starts to kind of want to go down, you just pull it up and stick it in some glue. What do you guys think about this? Have you done this before? That's what I wanted to know. And then I kept talking and I got distracted and I forgot to ask. Who has made champagne or wine cork uh, paper tassels. Okay, I think they look better a little bit fuller, so I'm gonna do one more piece. Looking for a pretty piece that's got lots of action on it. And then I'll show you the next two steps. Who has done this? Is this more than one piece of paper? No. And what did you um, do with them? I would love to know. I think I first saw this idea, gosh, like over five years ago, and I was intrigued by it. And then every year since then, I've made them. Different, you know, just putting a new and a different kind of spin on them. Like these most recent ones, I used lace. Okay. And I could keep going, but we're gonna stop right there. Uh, the fuller, the better. And if you want, you can give them a little trim on the bottom if they're crooked or you, you don't like how it looks. Okay. I was searching high and low in my craft closet for my little um, eye hooks or screw eyes that were gold and that are petite, but I could not find them. They're here somewhere. So I'm using these big ones. Okay. Um, but this would not be my first choice. So I'm just going to take one of these eye hooks. These are, let's see, does it say? They're zinc number 212. I don't know if that means the size or what. Um, and these are Everbuilt brand. So I think that means I got those at Home Depot. Okay, so then I'm just going to poke this little screw hook into the top of my cork. You have to push when you're first getting started. And these little eye hook things, you can get them everywhere. A craft store, a hardware store, see. And I'm gonna just use a piece of this um, my uh, what is this called? Polished hemp from Walmart. I folded it in half, I'm gonna poke it through the eye hole and pull the tail through there. And then I'm going to tie a knot for it to go over a branch or over a knob or something. 
however long you want. I'm going to trim that off. And then let's look. Um, I thought it would be fun to use some of this beautiful ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby that is, we made, remember we made those beautiful pearl necklaces with this. This is called Velvet Trim with Fray Edge. It's Merchant Brand, Merchant 41 brand from Hobby Lobby. It was $3.99 and I bought it when it was on sale for sure. And I'm going to use this bluish gray color. I don't know how much I'm going to need. Let's just cut a piece off. Honestly, you can use whatever whatever you might have handy, or you can go without it. It looks fine like that too. Okay, so put a little bit of it right here, right at the lip where the paper starts. get my hair dryer out when I'm finished to melt these glue strings that are everywhere. But look how pretty that is. And then I, there's so many things I could do. Um, I could do buttons. Let's see what a gray mother of pearl button would look like. seen this. I'm just going to put it on the other side and I can twist my eye hook around so it's facing that front direction. And there we go. Da -da -da. Once you get started making these, you can crank a ton of them out. This would be a fun thing to do with some, I would do, I would do this with adults, unless you're going to use like Eileen's tacky glue or something. I wouldn't um, have children be doing this particular craft with the hot glue because it does get so much on your hands. Even though it doesn't, it's not painful, it's, um, let me fix this one that fell off. Uh, where did I put that piece? Where did my desk is? My craft desk is a little bit of a disaster. I could use some of my awesome Totally Dazzle Bling, which is what this is right here. So let me get a hold of these. up some of my paper. You can always get an iron out if necessary, but what do you guys think about these? Aren't they pretty? And weren't they easy? Easy, easy, easy. Now this, this craft, I did all of these today using sheet music. And some of it is vintage, but that's not necessary. There are different colors, you know. The paper is different colors depending on what it was printed on and how old it is. Um, so we made this was the first one. And 
here it is without glitter and here it is with glitter that was the first style and then I showed you how to make this which I glittered uh, using that gold Sulin fine and you could cover this more heavily if you wanted and then I showed you how to do these so I will get pictures of everything I'll put those um, those pictures in the comments. I will also put them uh, just on DIY Dreaming. If you decide to make any of these or anything else, and I'll show you one more thing before I go that I'm working on for future craft. I'm always like five crafts ahead, just in case you didn't know. Um, I want to see pictures. So, did you know that I have a private Facebook group for all of us to share pictures of our craft projects? If you didn't, it's called Dreamy, D-I-Y, and that's D-R-E-A-M-Y, and there's a space, D-I-Y. It's a kind of little takeoff on D-I-Y Dreaming. And um, it's for us to share our craft projects. They're just craft projects, so not selling makeup or uh, sharing. Uh, don't share other crafters' videos, because then I get 100 questions about how Miss Awesome Barb from the Shabby Tree did this or that. Um, and then be nice to each other. Uh, those are the three things. But anyways, if you didn't know I have that group, you should hop over there. Just put it in your search bar on Facebook. Dreamy DIY. It's a group. It's free. Um, do make sure that you answer the three questions or else my admin won't let you in. And then, once you get in, get a cup of coffee or an iced tea or whatever's appropriate for the time of day and the time of year. And click on the photos button and just start scrolling. There's like over 30,000 people that are part of that group. And did I tell you it's free? It's free. <laughs> and they have shared some amazing projects. Some of them are like their take or their spin on my projects, but a lot of them are completely unique and brand new, things that I get inspired by. Um, so I would love to see pictures of what you make if you do any of this. Um, and you can post some here, but the better place really is to post it on Dreamy DIY and just explain what you did. Okay, let me show you this. One more thing. I am working currently to make a Christmas tree out of these vintage wood spools with sheet music on them. It's going to be really cute. So, as soon as I get this all mastered, I haven't done this before, I will um, let you guys know and go live with that. And then, of course, I have, you know, a hundred other things going. But I hope you like this. I hope that it inspired you. Um, look around your house to see if you have old dictionary pages, if you have sheet music of any kind. It could be clarinet, <laughs> violin, piano, xylophone, whatever. It could be marching band music. Look around your house, ask your sister, your next door neighbor, anyone that you know that had a kid that took um, lessons. Um, and then if you can't find it there, you can purchase it on Etsy, I think. But go to your local thrift store or flea market and just look in the books, and most likely you'll find these big books that, for three, four dollars, maybe two dollars, of music that you can use. Um, ask your church if they have any of their hymnals left, if they don't use those anymore. A lot of churches are going to having the music up on the projector on the screen and not having people pull the hymnals out of the back of the pews. Um, and I know you guys have told me, a lot of you have told me that you've, that's where you've gotten your, your music. But, it, and last resort, buy some brand new, uh, buy a brand new guitar book or something like that and craft with it. Okie dokie. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Feel free to ask questions. Um, I will put together a rudimentary, um, supply list but 
it just depends on which one it was. It's, these were mostly sheet music and glue. And maybe a little beads or a little ribbon. Or maybe a, a wine cork. But, I mean, they're pretty, pretty basic. So, um, anyways, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Be looking back here later for pictures. Um, sprinkle, sprinkle, all that normal good stuff. See you later.